Good afternoon. Today, I will, I will talk to you about something that we should think of in all our countries and our governments. I'll first begin with the situation of African people, especially those who live now in America, France, and the other country. Of course, it will. You will talk about slavery, but it will also talk about something that our ancestors never thought of. And I believe it's time somebody had to think about this. And I hope, if I'm not the first, I won't be the last person that thinks about it. We used to call African people animals. Well, animals are creatures living things that have instincts. Well, first, that's a good thing. But the problem is, if African people were animals, how could they have the ability to speak with their mouth? How in the world is it possible so far, the only animal which is known as having the, the speaking ability, just like humans do, are the parrots. And should they ever be able to speak, they only use the very limited vocabulary, whether it is in French or any other language. So that is the first question. Second question, if they have instincts, why do we, why do we hesitate, for example, if we, if we want to commit suicide, what's holding us? For example, you want to stab yourself in the stomach, or you want to shoot yourself, unless you do drugs, or you're drunk, you can't care yourself. We have what we call the survival instinct. So animals do. We were animals. I am a white person. And if I had, the, well, I won't use the word black because I don't say black people. I say African people. If I had an African person next to me, unfortunately, there's nobody here. I believe that if he tried to kill themselves using a knife or a gun or something, the survival instinct would hold them. And it would happen the same thing to me because they and I are the same. The only difference is the color of our skin. And sometimes we don't want to face it or perhaps we know, but we don't even want to acknowledge it. But those we mistreat are sometimes more intelligent than we want to make them believe. For example, you can find any kid you want, whether they are, they are, they are a boy or a girl or something. We in France have the tradition to, to say that when they lose their first teeth, they will get a coin. But we tell them that a little mouse is about to bring the, this coin. But I'm 90% sure they know that parents are bringing this coin. But we still want to make them believe a little mouse brings it. And the most known legend is Santa Claus. We say that Santa Claus is coming from the sky, well, from the from the the clouds, and drops presents in the chimney. But I believe that kids know that Santa Claus doesn't exist. Of course, it brings more fantasy. But I believe that kids are more aware about the true world they live in than we are. And that we don't want to acknowledge it. 
I know that these words, if they are heard by someone influenced, will be a kind of scandal. But it's time we talked about this scandal. It's time we start being scared to say things as they truly are. It's time we stopped being hypocrites. And it begins with one person only. Well, as is today, I am this person. But I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one, and I'm pretty sure I won't be the last one. And I'd like to tell you about something. It's now more specific for the United States. The Second Amendment of the, of the American Constitution. Of course, the American Constitution was, was signed on the 4th of July, 1776. That's for sure. And the real independence of the 13 colonies was acknowledged in 1783. The Second Amendment truly allows that any American citizen is allowed to have a fire weapon with them. Well, of course, they must be allowed to use it. But the thing is, I'm kind of amazed that by the time shocked by Mr. Trump's decision. He said that every American citizen, even those who are affected with a mental disease, are allowed to have a fire weapon with them. I'd like to know who between the president and mad people, who between both is the most mad? I believe I don't have to ask myself this question. If you want to take out a tree, you must not attack the leaves, you must attack the roots. If we want to deal with the problem, the problem doesn't come from the president himself. It comes from the constitution. My country, France, has changed many times its constitution. And I never heard in any of these that any weapon, whether they were it was a fire weapon or a knife. I never heard any weapon allowed by the law. But the weapon we have and what we don't want to use is reason. Many people will say that we have reason. Of course, even African American people have reason. But sometimes we truly know it, that we are scared. We are so scared to tell ourselves that those we colonized, especially the islands we colonized in the 19th century, such as Australia, New Caledonia, New Zealand, Polynesia, those people out there were not living the modern way we were living today. And we truly know that those people were more intelligent than we are. We are using profit. We use money to live. But what do they use? They give. They don't buy. They don't purchase. They give. And the one thing that we must give one another is not money first. It's humanity first. I'm no communist. I'm no anarchist. If I were, Perhaps that had begun many riots long ago. I'm not that type of person. They believe that there are people who really want to do this and who think my words are kind of praise for many riots everywhere. No, I'm just talking about facts. If you want me to bring you proofs, then you better search for them yourselves. Because you know about the problem, but you don't want to know it correctly. If you knew the problem correctly, then you would have solved it yourselves. But you're too scared of truth that you don't even want to solve the problem. You know the problem is in front of you, but you don't even realize it. And the day you realize it, this day you will see how much time you've lost thinking that the problem could be solved by itself. If 
problems were solved by themselves. Life would be much easier now. That's not the case. And I believe that very poor people, or those we consider as not smart, are perhaps smarter than us and more aware of what happens around us. So next time you go by a street, whether you walk, whether you ride a bicycle or something, watch every corner of the street. Take time not to look at your phone or something. Take time to look at the world around you. And ask yourself this question. How, how committed can I be? What type of commitment can I use in order to help those who live around me? If I look at a homeless person on the pavement, ask yourself, will I ever end up someday like them? Shouldn't I fear to be fired and eventually be in the street without any shelter or something? And when you have faced what poor people face today, then you'll finally know that humanity goes over all the gold of the world. Long live peace.